Hello, I'm John. I'm a die maker at Corbin Manufacturing. We're going to do a video here demonstrating a couple of uh, air gun slugs in 30 caliber. We're first going to show you a hollow point air gun slug, and then we're going to show you a hollow ogive air gun slug and describe the difference between the two and the, how the processes are not the same either. So <clears throat> the first thing that we do in the process is we, we cut a suitable length core that will approximate the size of the uh, slug we want. We put it in the die. I've got this set up for hollow point. We push it down until we extrude off a little bit of lead. You set your pellet weight by adjusting this punch up or down and the excess lead will extrude out through the holes. And here we have a hollow point air gun slug with a dish base. Just as simple as that. You cut a core that's pretty close to the size of your pellet and put it in the die, give it a squash, and you have yourself an air gun slug. Uh, one remark I'd like to make is that all of our air gun slug punches that form the base, they have a ring grooved into them. And we call that a limit line. And in order to not damage the punch or the die, do not uh, introduce the punch any deeper into the die than that ring would indicate. Because to do so, we'll put you down into the ogive of the, of the pellet and, and that'll damage the corner of the punch and it may damage the shape of the die. The word ogive describes the nose of a bullet, it, whatever configuration it happens to be. Okay, the first part <coughs> of producing a hollow ogive air gun slug is to preform a hollow cavity in the front end of the slug. And the second part of the process is to go back into the original point forming die and bring that cavity just together to where it touches the pin, but no pressure is put on it to compress the slug at all. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take our slugs or our pre-cut cores and I have some prepared here. We put them in there and compress them down and then here again we're dictating the the weight of the slug by how far we introduce the outside punch or the base punch which come in lots of different configurations, dish base, cup base, hollow base, flat base. This happens to be dish base. And then once we accomplish that, then we come back out, remove the, the swaged core. And if you can see on this camera here, it's a hollow cavity. So we'll go ahead and make two or three of those. In any case, when you operate a Corbin hand press, you always want to cam the handle all the way over at the bottom of the stroke. That's the only way you can ensure that the die goes to the same place and will repeat the weight of the slug every time. Okay, now we'll switch back to the point form die, but we're going to change the punch for the nose because we will not use the hollow point ejector. We're going to use the hollow ogive ejector and <clears throat> it differs from the hollow point in that it is smaller in diameter, so it gives you a smaller opening in the front of the pellet. You can use the hollow point 
ejector if you so choose. It's just going to give you a larger uh, entry hole in the front of the slug. Now, unlike when we made the hollow point, we're not going to extrude any lead out of this point form die, because if we put enough pressure on it to extrude the lead, it's going to collapse that hollow cavity inside the ogive, which is not what we want to do. We want to maintain the hollow ogive. It's done for various reasons, sometimes for balance, sometimes just to keep the weight of the pellet down. And we're going to take our first one and work it down until we can get that, that cavity just to close up around the pin and no further. And then once, once we know where that place is, then we can we can lock this punch holder down and then we can process the rest of them through and they'll all be the same. Being really consistent with all of the parts of the process is going to render the best results. You can see in the camera that we're closing this up. It's not closed yet, but we're closing it up and we're getting close. Very, very close. Yep. Okay. I know I'm there because I can I can feel the drag from the little hollow point pin as I pull it off of there. So there we are. It looks very much like the hollow point. But the difference being is if you cut this slug in half, you would see that it opens up and it's got a very distinct cavity in the front end of the pellet. Now we'll stick another one in there and it should go to the same place. And it does. And there we have three in a row, all the same. And that's the process for making a hollow ogive air gun slug. Again, I want to reiterate the importance of not overpowering your pre-formed uh, core because you'll just collapse the ogive and, and then you'll end up with just a hollow point. And you may damage this tiny little pin here that forms the hole in the front. People who do a lot of this uh, discover that once they get a setup and they want to repeat it, then they will configure their tooling and they want it to stay that way. They don't want to have to search for that place. So if you're going to make hollow ogive slugs here and you know the weight you're going to do and everything's going to be consistent the next time you do them, then you, you, you set, you get various punch holders, you, you, find your place where you need to be, anchor them down, and then and, and clamp the, the nut, then you can just take the whole assembly out and, and keep it with that tooling. And so then the next operation, you'll use an, another punch holder. So s some people that, that make all different sizes and, and shapes of things, they could have dozens of these punch holders dedicated to each part of the process and that simplifies things so you don't have to rediscover 
uh, your sizes and weights and positions is what it amounts to. So that's a good question. One of the reasons that uh, we have good success with our equipment is because we've been doing it a long time. Uh, we've got it down. We know what we're doing. Uh, the company's been in business for since 1975, I believe. I've been with the company for 33 years as a die maker. And uh, we aren't the only people that make swage dies. We aren't the only people that make good swage dies. But we feel that we make the best swage dies. And that's because we know what we're doing. We're very careful about our, about our processes and the materials that we use. And so if you want consistency, repeatability, uh, repair parts, if you damage something and, and you can expect them to fit, and it doesn't matter how long ago you actually bought your die set, we can probably accommodate you. So that's what we have to offer at Corbin Manufacturing. If you like this video and you want to see more, leave us a like, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, leave us a comment below. Thanks.